So you have two camps here at the end of the game that an article came out, I think it was The Athletic, Yep. that was saying, hey, I asked both teams about the overtime rules. One team, the San Francisco 49ers, both Eric Armstead, Kyle Husecheck, a couple of guys were like, yeah, we didn't really have any idea about the overtime rules until we were reading it on the big board. <laughs> Right, we thought, yeah, you just want to get the ball first, go down, score a touchdown, the game will be over, win the Super Bowl. Not so fast, my friends. Right, and then you have the other side where Chris Jones, McDuffie, those guys are like we've been talking about the postseason overtime rules since training camp, and we've had a plan put in place since training camp on what we're going to do when we get in that situation, how we're going to react, this is what we're going to do, and why we're going to do this, and this is the strategy behind it. And it just continues to pile on why Andy reads the GOAT. And I'm not trying to shit all over Shanahan here, but that's a poor job in pre preparing your football team. You have to go into that situation covering every single base. And somehow, somewhere, there's a quality control coach that's going to work this morning for the last time because he did not have <laughs> everything put in front of Kyle Shanahan Sorry, Bob, for fired. all of this. But that just it's it true. shows championship level. It's such a small small margin. Now, I'm not saying if they would have 10 on defense first, they would have won the football game. But I do believe that going on defense first is the correct strategy with these postseason rules, much like college, because you want to know what you have to do or you want to have the opportunity to win the football game if that's the choice you want to make in the overtime rules. But the fact that they had never talked about it and no one on the team knew anything about it is just a bad look for the San Francisco Did, brass. Didn't Shanahan try to spin it? And maybe I don't know, maybe maybe he was trying to play some chess in his head, but that we went, we went first on offense because if it was tied after the two guaranteed possessions, we wanted the ball first in the sudden death portion. Do you buy that? No, no. Because the players already came out and said they had no idea about anything. I mean, dude, Jay's right. Yeah, when he, you talk he about tried saying, yeah, he tried, but when the players straight up were like, they already told us. I they don't know. know. Like, yeah. dude, I'm, I'm Jay's right. When you talk about a championship team and you want to know why this team's already being called a dynasty, is because they take care of the little details. It's the tiny details that you hit that make us move faster. And something like that is a tiny detail. Like going over this stuff, the fact that they were like, we've rehearsed this, we've done this, but they were also the reason that it was changed, right? Them and the Bills. Isn't that why they Josh changed Allen. Yeah. That's a Josh yeah. Allen rule. Dude. That's the Josh Allen rule. But that's why I'm saying, like, I'm surprised nobody knew because when they started talking about it, even Tony and Romo knew. Like, Tony was like, both teams get a possession. And then everybody was freaking out when the time was running down. And Tony was like, why is everyone? Listen, I know everyone's freaking out. We're probably reading Twitter. <laughs> dude, like, I'm, we, I'm glad he we, explained that. We I were all kind of sitting there, and he was like, dude, everybody needs to calm down. It's just going to go into quarter two. But number yeah. one, the fact that nobody knew that. Did you think that the Super Bowl would tie? Yeah. Did you think, like, I was uh, my son. Shake my hands, son go, idiots. Johnny goes, why is nobody moving faster? I go, well, Jay, no, it's the it, Super it Bowl. You but it wouldn't tie. have been a tie because they were losing. I think, I th and I and I had I needed Tony Romo's clarification that wait a second, if so they they get their guaranteed drive, but like, do they get it into a second quarter? Because they were, if that clock hit zero, they were still down by three. Right. They scored the they scored on the like with what two seconds to go. I'm, yeah. People are ripping on Tony Romo the last couple of days. I, no, I thought it was great him for clarifying in that. Oh, uh, you dude, that's the that's Niners could use that. That's every yeah. commentator's dream moment, right? He's oh, like, yeah. I've rehearsed for this. Yeah. Like, I know nobody knows what's happening. Like, allow me to usher you into the overtime His rules. spotter was telling him probably. He was like, now, Tony, tell him this. Rule number one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because Tony then just, like, blabbed all over the game-winning touchdowns. Like, this Super Bowl-winning touchdown, to be fair, atmosphere, crowd. Hey, like, Tony, just bring it down a notch. To be fair, the Chiefs low-key fucking did the Niners dirty because the clock was running down and everybody was like, oh, they're freaking out. Everyone's like, no, they're going to go into a second one. And then all of a sudden, everyone was like, okay, well, we're probably just going to go into another overtime. And then with like literally yeah. three seconds, they ran a play. And everybody, I think everybody fell asleep because Tony Romo was talking and the Niners defense was even like, hey, we'll go into another quarter. We got this shit. And yeah. then all of a sudden, nobody had a chance. And it was like it got swept right out from underneath them. And it was low-key fucking kind of funny. I'm not going to well, lie to you. I mean, even Mahomes had to explain to uh, Hardman, right? Hardman's won the caught yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. He had to explain to him, like, you just won the Super Bowl. He didn't really right? like, fully know. He he's didn't like, really uh, he's like, like, this is good. I just and scored. And I think he dropped the ball, like, dumb, dumb. That you, you want that football. <laughs> like, you don't want to give that thing <laughs> don't up. Don't give that up. Dude. Hey, I have, one more, I have one more Kyle Shanahan thing for you guys. Yeah, what's up? Go so, all right. Mike Mike Florio Mike Florio loves the day after the Super Bowl. Man. Oh, just, he lives for it. Dude. Just comes in, he lives for it, 
picking the meat off the bone of the dead the body of the day after the Super Bowl. So he's got some Kyle Shanahan. I don't even know if you call this speculation or what, but he basically wrote an article comparing Andy Reid with the Eagles, who regular season success would go deep in the playoffs, would go. They went to like four NFC Championship games, a Super Bowl, couldn't get over the hump. And he speculates: Could Shanahan need the same sort of fresh start? Has because there's a lot of and, and Booney, you probably hear it. Like you're a former 49er. There's a lot of 49er fans that are just sort of emotionally at the end of their wits with Kyle Shanahan because he keeps getting close, and then his players don't know the overtime rules or so, or something happens, right? He and if you go back to that Atlanta game, he was the offensive coordinator mm -hmm. in the 28-3 to debacle. Yep. He has now been one of the overseers of three blown double-digit Super Bowl leads going back to Atlanta and then twice with San Francisco. Where are you guys at with Kyle Shanahan in terms of, like, can you keep pushing this rock up that hill after losing again in the Super Bowl? Yes. Or does he need a fresh start somewhere? No. No, I'm not getting rid of Kyle Shanahan yet. I, I believe in Kyle. I'm 100%. And I never, totally understand what people say because at one point I was that guy in the room. Like, what are we fucking doing? Beating our head on a wall for nothing. Right? Like, it's just, it gets hard. But at the same time, there are not that many good coaches out there. I'm sorry. It's hard to rally these guys. It's hard to rally these teams. And no offense, but everybody all year kept telling him how bad his fucking quarterback sucked. Oh, he's just a game manager. He's just this guy. He's just this guy. So to get all the way to the Super Bowl with a game manager, dude, I mean, we're talking about a team that's been here twice in the last four years, right? Been in the playoffs every year. I mean, it should like, have been there. I mean, if Bird, if Bird doesn't blow his elbow up, they're in it last year. Like, that's it my should have point. been Chiefs like, Niners last year as well. Purdy doesn't blow his elbow up. But you can't get mad at a coach because he loses his what to the greatest player ever. Like it's hard to go out there and do that. I get that you could be mad at the defense. Like at one point in the game, you saw him motherfucking Steve Wilkes. Did anyone else catch that? Yeah. He called the timeout. Time yeah. Even my wife goes, Why are they so off? And I go, because he's going to get yelled at, for sure. And that was exactly Kyle Shanahan going, force them to make those fucking perfect throws every single time. Stop giving yeah. them five yards. Stop giving them the dink and dunks. I'm not so hard right now on Kyle Shanahan. I'm not so mad about it. I, Dude, he went out there and threw a double fucking pass in the Super Bowl. Fuck anyone that's like, oh, he sucks. He's not good enough because you don't have the fucking balls to even call that play. Dude called it and it scored, Okay got to get off his balls a little bit. You got to start looking I mean, more at the defense and being like, "Hey, technically, it's your fucking fault." <laughs> what do you want to say? We scored as many points as they tell you you have to. Score over 21 points, you should win the game. If you don't, it's on the defense. What do you want us to say? What do you I want mean, to say? For me, I, I kind of think about it as like were people really all over firing Tony Dungy because he couldn't beat Brady? No. Like and he had Manning like I get it, you you had Manning, right? And I he's supposedly one of the greats too, but like he couldn't be Brady for how long, right? Like I don't remember people calling for Tony Dungy's head in Indy. Maybe I wasn't an Indy fan, and so I wasn't listening to it, or I wasn't into the Colts media, or it wasn't a major market like San Fran was, you know. But Tony Dungy was with the Colts for seven years, I think it was, or I mean, I, I can't, I think it, I think that's right. And I just I don't remember people being like, ah, he can't beat Tom Brady. Who's the goat? Like. Send I mean, him out of town. Twitter didn't exist at that time, yes, really. That's so you, you may not have fair. seen people's but we, opinions. But. We don't remember anyone talking about Tony like that. Like Coaches weren't kind of called out like that. Like People weren't like, get rid of him. Um, get a new guy well, in that, here. Like, that's the era of college. That's the era of that's football. Exactly I'll say college, NFL. People like, think it's just going to change. the era it's of not. football. It's like yeah. the grass ain't always greener, friends. No, like, it's not. It, it is, it is, like, you could have Joe Judge walking into your program and be like, I got you to the promised land. <laughs> Right, like it, it can go south so quickly, and when you have a great coach, and Shanahan's a great coach, yeah, like you don't want to just be like ah, because of you can't win the big one against the best, you got to go. I think what's tough go. is, dude, teams, teams, and well, fans on one side, and then owners and front offices, you're always looking for the next chess move in the NFL, and oftentimes, I, I would say what like a third of teams determine every year that the chess move is firing a coach because you're the Panthers, or you're you just hit a wall. And you can't make the playoffs. In this case, it's really frustrating because the answer might just be, you've got one of the three or four Try best again. coaches in the league. <laughs> yeah, you gotta go again. You just you just ran into one of the five greatest coaches of all time, and maybe the greatest football player of all time. Yeah. And it sucks to hear as a if you're a fan of the Niners, if you're the if you're the ownership group, right? Like, 
there might not be a chess move. I mean, there's like roster chess moves, but there might not be a big if you fi- okay, if you fire Shanahan not like and that. hire this guy. Jed's not like that. He would never do that. He is not that kind of guy. He's very calculating. He's very smart. I don't uh, think. I mean, John Lynch. The being a former, John Lynch do being a former player too, right? Like he he's he's smart enough, and he can sit on enough team meetings, and he can sit in on enough like around the building type stuff to understand if the coach has the team or not. Right. And I think that will be that will be the ultimate. All the stuff we just speculated and talked about is up in the air. Ultimately, John Lynch will make that decision when he walks around the San Francisco building and he talks with the players and one of they go, Do you still believe in Kyle Shanahan? Right? Because if the players don't believe in him and the players have lost hope in him, then it's probably time to move on because that's a harder hill to climb back from than being able to block out the noise from the fans or like settle the unsettled owners. Like if you can't get the 53 dudes to be like, we want him, we rally behind him, we love him, but we believe in him, then nothing else matters. How hard is that in a locker room now? If you guys, you guys are, I mean, Booney, you guys almost won the Super Bowl 10 years ago. How hard is it to come back now if you're the 49ers and say, okay, Whew, okay, that was tough. We it's went to the end of overtime. Let's push the, it up the hill again. These guys have been doing it for like what the last four years. They've been going deep yeah. into the playoffs, and that's Jay and I talked about this last time, and that's what we went through in Frisco. The three years we went to the NFC Championships. You're tired. You are really, and it's so hard to explain because it's not like oh I could just go to bed. It's like your body's like I'm tired. I physically fucking tired right now, dude. And people are like, come on, we got to keep going, and you're like. I'm just tired. <laughs> I can't explain month, it yeah. to you. Two month off season. Two I don't know months. what to tell you guys. Yeah, and it's and you're and like all my Jay's clients point. just got back from vacation. Like yeah. all my clients that ended their season, like they they all got back from vacation. Like all the jokes about like oh they're flying to Cancun, like that shit's real. No, it's yeah. very like, real. Like you dudes bounce. See ya first week in February. Don't call I'm me. Gone. Don't look like I'm out. And so yeah, I'm like oh needed that man like body feels so much better i'm ready to get back into training ready to go these dudes aren't even moved home yet no like like, they're gonna get home at the end of february and be like well i guess i'm going back in six weeks like it's that's not enough time for your body to regroup from a grueling season like that it's just tough hey to uh jay's point that's a great call because uh there has been times where people have come to me and been like how's the team have the is the owner has has the head coach lost them Hey, are you guys giving up on this shit or what? It's like, no, we're good. We're good to go. They they will come to you and ask you straight up, like Jay said. The GM mm-hmm. will come and be like, tell me right now, are we fighting another year with this dude? And you're like, yeah, fuck yeah, we're going. We're go time. It's I don't see this team at all being like, oh, Kyle ruined it for us. I see them being like, we were a little they underprepared. Do, they do have some cap issues. Like, they let's, do, they'll they figure, do. hey, they kick do that can down cap. the road. They, come on. They, 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 the chickens are coming home to roost. Like the Catholic, until the Saints, the, until the Saints get punished, like Saints are eighty million. No, until they get punished, the no one's getting punished. Yeah, eighty million. Mickey, how far are we going, dude? Are we going to go nine <laughs> figures into this hole? Because <laughs> Jesus, you're never climbing out of that, dude. He just like, he's just taking the national cap? debt approach. Someone is, else is will pay it eventually. Benson's like, I got it. Still on their cap. It's ridiculous, yeah, man. Uh, dude. 